What's up, witches and wizards? So, you think you know Harry Potter and its annual House Cup competition? If you do, you're probably familiar with the comments about how Dumbledore cheated at the end of year one by giving all those extra points to Gryffindor, how he totally stole the rightful win from Slytherin, how it was completely unfair and Slytherin got ripped off. But, spoiler alert, that idea is ridiculous. Dumbledore awarding those last minute points was the only way to make sure the House Cup wasn't won by cheating. Let's all turn to page 394 and study up on this magical misconception. And in case someone recently hit you with a Confundus charm, spoilers ahead for the Harry Potter series. So for those who aren't familiar with what I'm talking about, towards the end of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, Dumbledore is announcing the winner of the annual House Cup. Slytherin has 472 points, Ravenclaw has 426, Hufflepuff has 352, and Gryffindor has 312. It looks like Slytherin has won, but then, Dumbledore awards a total of 170 last-minute points to Harry, Ron, Hermione, and Neville, pushing Gryffindor into first place and taking the win away from Slytherin. There's an idea commonly repeated by some fans of the series, especially those who got sorted into Slytherin on Pottermore, that this was unfair and that what Dumbledore did was flat-out cheating. They say the Slytherins worked hard for those points and they got screwed here. But here's the reality. What Dumbledore did was actually to correct the cheating that had already happened. Whose cheating was that, you may ask? Snape. Throughout Throughout the series, we see Snape blatantly playing favorites when it comes to house points. He never once ever takes points away from his own house, even when it's super obviously warranted. And similarly, Snape never gives points to anyone not in his house. And in fact, he often takes points from other houses for things that realistically should have earned them points. The other heads of houses, McGonagall, Flitwick, and Sprout, all give and take points fairly. In Chapter 10, McGonagall takes points from Hermione for trying to take on a troll all on her own, but she also gives points to Harry and Ron for saving Hermione's life. In Chapter 15, she takes 50 points each from Harry, Ron, and Hermione for being out of bed after hours, but only takes 20 points from Draco for the exact same offense. Well, big deal, some of you may be thinking. So Snape is a little biased. It can't have skewed the final results that much. Well, actually, it can. If it's been a few years since you've read the books or if you've only ever seen the movies, you may need a refresher on just how bad Snape's cheating is. So let's take a look. In Chapter 8 of Philosopher's Stone, Snape intentionally targets and provokes Harry with a barrage of difficult questions Harry can't answer, then takes away one point for respectfully suggesting that Hermione seems to know the answer. Later that same lesson, he docks Harry an additional point for not helping Neville, which is especially egregious because later on in the series, we see Snape take points away because Harry tried to help Neville. In Chapter 11, Snape takes points away from Harry for having a library book outside, which, as Ron pointed out, isn't even a real rule. Snape literally made up a fake rule just to have an excuse to take points away. In Chapter 12, he catches Ron and Malfoy about to fight and takes five points away from Ron, but does nothing to punish Malfoy at all. In Prisoner of Azkaban, Chapter 9, he takes points away from Hermione just for answering the question he had asked. In Goblet of Fire, Chapter 18, Harry gets into a fight with Draco, but the spells ricochet off each other, so Hermione and Goyle end up getting hit instead. Snape sends Goyle to the hospital wing, but when Harry and Ron point out that Hermione has been disfigured by Draco's curse, Snape says that she looks no different to him. When Harry and Ron protest, Snape takes away 50 points each from Harry and Ron, plus detention. But of course, he doesn't take any points away at all from Draco. In Half-Blood Prince Chapter 8, Snape takes away 50 points from Harry for being late, and then another 20 points for still being in his muggle clothes, despite the fact that neither of those things were even within Harry's control because Malfoy had paralyzed him on the train. Oh, and of course Malfoy never loses any points for hexing another student. And those are just the instances we know about. Remember, Harry's class of first year students is just one of seven classes at Hogwarts. We only really see what happens with the year one students during the Philosopher's Stone, but there's also all the students who are in years two through seven. So while Snape might be teaching potions to Harry, Ron, and the other year one students at 10 a.m., he's also teaching Fred, George, and the other year three Gryffindors later that same day, and then teaching Percy and the fifth year Gryffindors the next day. If Snape is abusive and plays favorites with the year one students like Harry, it's a pretty safe bet he does the same with the older students. We just don't get to see those interactions because Harry doesn't see them. So then, we have to multiply the amount of points that Snape unfairly takes away from Gryffindor by seven to account for the older classes. But wait, even among just Harry's class, we still don't get to see every lesson. The books and movies both show us just the classes that are important to the plot, and can skip days or weeks of time in between the scenes we're shown. For example, Chapter 10 of The Philosopher's Stone starts on September 13th, when Harry and Ron are discussing what Fluffy could be guarding, and then the book skips ahead to about a week later, when Harry receives the Nimbus 2000. That's an entire week worth of classes that we don't get to see, but those classes still happened, and it's a safe bet that Snape's just as much of a cheater with the house points during that week as he is every other week. The reason we don't see Gryffindor's score just constantly plummeting from Snape's off-screen point tanking is because all the classes with the other teachers are still happening off-screen too. So while Snape is doing everything he can to cheat Slytherin into the lead, the other teachers are playing fair and giving 
or taking enough deserved points from all the other houses to keep up with Snape's cheating. In other words, if Snape didn't cheat, Slytherin would be in dead last from day one, and Gryffindor, Ravenclaw, and Hufflepuff scores would be hundreds, if not thousands of points higher than what we see by the end. And that's where Dumbledore and his last minute points come in. See, he realizes that the Slytherins would be dead last if Snape took points away from them when it was warranted, and that Gryffindor would be in first if Snape didn't go out of his way to unfairly target them. Now, some of you are probably thinking, but Gryffindor was in last place because of the points Harry, Ron, and Hermione lost for being out of bed after midnight, and those points were taken away by McGonagall, not Snape. But the thing you have to realize is that even with the 150 points McGonagall took, Gryffindor would still be in first if Snape had played fair. Consider this. In just the three lessons we see during Philosopher's Stone, Snape took around a dozen points from Gryffindor, which is an average of four points per class. Harry has potions class three times a week, and the Hogwarts school year runs from the start of September to the third week of June, with a two-week break for Christmas and for Easter, for a total of 39 weeks of classes. At three classes per week, that means Harry has class with Snape 117 times over the course of one school year. At an average of four points per class multiplied by 117 classes, that's 468 points that Snape would have taken from just the first year students. Multiply that by 7 to include the older students who also have Snape's class, and we get 3,276 points. That's right, viewers. Over the course of just one year, Snape would have taken over 3,000 points from Gryffindor. Compared to that, the 150 points that McGonagall took from the Golden Trio is just a drop in the bucket. This is also not counting all the chances to take points Snape would have outside of classes, just making up a reason and docking five points here and two points there every time he passes a random Gryffindor in the hall. It's also safe to say he'd be taking plenty of points away from Hufflepuff and Ravenclaw as well, though maybe not quite as much since Gryffindor is Snape's main target because it contains Harry. Now, upon hearing that Gryffindor's total should have been over 3,000 points, you may wonder, then why was Slytherin's point total only 472? Snape wasn't taking points away from them. And no, he wasn't. But the other teachers were. The difference is, they were actually doing it fairly. You have to remember that in the actual books, the actual Slytherins were pretty much just god-awful little monsters. A lot of the series' fans like to whitewash over how terrible the Slytherins were in the books because they themselves identify as a Slytherin or were sorted into Slytherin on Pottermore, but the simple reality is that the actual actual canon Slytherin students were, with almost no exceptions, extremely poorly behaved. And that poor behavior would naturally lead to a lot of point deductions. Insulting other students? The Slytherins do that pretty much every time they open their mouths and that's gonna cost them some points, at least with anyone other than Snape. Bullying others and starting fights? Yep, that's gonna cost them some points, and the Slytherins do it. Stealing from other students? Yep, the book Slytherins do plenty of that, and similarly it'll cost them plenty of points. Flat out beating up or hexing other students? Again, the Slytherins in the book do it all the time, and they'd be losing points for it all the time. Using a slur that's basically the magical equivalent of the N-word? Oh yeah, you better believe that's gonna cost you a whole heap of points, Draco. Granted, the Slytherins being the most ambitious house would also be earning a fair amount of points too, especially since the other teachers do give Slytherin students points when they've earned it. But ambitious or not, there's no way they're gonna earn enough points to get ahead with the sheer amount of bad behavior they engage in. Now, you may be wondering why Dumbledore didn't just stop Snape from cheating with the points, or why the other heads of houses didn't just start giving and taking points in the same way to even things out. Well, first of all, Dumbledore kind of had more important things to do with his time, such as, you know, saving the world. It may have only been the first year, but he was still spending almost all of his time trying to unearth clues about Voldemort and figure out the secret of his immortality and how to defeat him. Taking some time out of his day, every day, to police Snape's point taking was something he just didn't have time for. As for why the other heads of houses didn't just do the same as Snape with the points, they never would have stooped to his level. We know McGonagall doesn't like to see Gryffindor or lose, but she's far too principled to resort to cheating. The same goes for Flitwick and Sprout, too. Plus, even if they did start to cheat like Snape, Snape would just respond by cheating even harder. McGonagall takes 10 points from Slytherin for a bogus reason. Snape takes 20 from Gryffindor. She takes 50 in retaliation. He takes 100. She gives Harry 200. He gives Draco 1,000. It would inevitably become a vicious cycle of giving and taking ever larger amount of points to try and keep their own house in the lead. They honestly had no choice but to play fair and deal with Snape's favoritism. And again, it was far from the most important concern any of them had. So then, if we account for Snape's cheating, we see that the year-end point totals would have been several thousand points higher, with Gryffindor having something more like 3,600 points. Ravenclaw and Hufflepuff's totals would similarly be much higher without Snape's cheating, though not by as much since Snape picks on Gryffindor the most of all. So Ravenclaw and Hufflepuff would probably be somewhere around 3,400 and 3,200 respectively. Slytherin, on the other hand, is the only house that doesn't get points unfairly taken away, so their total wouldn't be any higher without Snape's cheating. If anything, it might even be a little lower. So then, was Dumbledore cheating when he gave those last-minute points to Harry, Ron, Hermione, and Neville? Was he robbing the Slytherins of their rightfully earned 
earned victory? Was he showing unfair favoritism towards the Gryffindors and rewarding Harry for just being Harry? Well, no, not so much. What he was doing was to correct the final winner to who it would have been without Snape's interference. And if you're wondering why he only awards extra points to Gryffindor when Hufflepuff and Ravenclaw had their scores unfairly affected by Snape too, it's because he was only concerned with making sure the rightful winner actually won, not with making the point totals exactly right. So hey, the next time someone on Reddit posts about how Dumbledore was an unfair jerk and the Slytherins got ripped off, you can expelliarmus that bogus argument right out of their mouth. Thank you, as always, for watching. If you like this kind of content and want to see more, please consider subscribing, and maybe hit the bell so you'll be notified when my next video comes out. If you want more like this, check out my video on why Spongebob is actually a really old man, or why the Zelda timeline Nintendo published is a total fake. Until then, this has been So You Think You Know, and now you do know.